Welcome to Component Placement in Altium Designer. In this module, we will place the components transferred from the design to the PCB. As a refresher, here are the schematics of the design that we transferred. Looking at the PCB, we can see there are two rooms. These are the red rectangles. The rooms are auto-generated and are based on the schematics. All of the components from a schematic sheet are in the associated rooms. Also notice the white connection lines that show net connectivity. These will come in handy during the placement. Just like with the schematics, we can adjust our view of the PCB using the mouse. We can use the rooms to roughly position the associated logic on the PCB. This is a quick but non-precise way to place devices on the board. Left click on a room and start to move it with the mouse. While the room is attached, tap the spacebar to rotate it counterclockwise. Holding the shift key down, and tapping the space bar will rotate the part clockwise. The default rules for the PCB require components to be contained within the room. Moving U2 out of its room will cause an error marker to flag up, like so. Deleting the rooms avoids these error markers. With the rooms now placed, we can delete them to allow us more freedom to move components around as needed. Now to fine tune the placement of individual components, there are a number of selection methods available to us. One method is a left mouse click into select a part. Another is a rectangle sweep of the mouse to select a group of components. And another method is selecting components in the schematic, which also selects them on the PCB. Left click on a part and continue holding the mouse button down. Now move the mouse to place the part onto the PCB. Whilst moving a component, tapping the space bar will rotate it counterclockwise. Holding the shift key down and tapping the spacebar will rotate the part clockwise. Releasing the mouse button drops the part. The next method of selecting parts is handy when needing to move more than one part. To select a group of parts, hold the left mouse button down and sweep out a rectangle. There are two types of rectangle selection modes, left to right and right to left. They differ in what is selected. The right to left select mode will select everything it touches as demonstrated here. The left to right select mode will select everything that the rectangle contains. Using the mouse and holding the left mouse button down, sweep left to right. Notice what is selected and what was not. This method is useful when the placed parts are close together and we want to have better control over what is selected. As before, whilst moving a group of components, if we needed to, we could rotate them using the spacebar. Let's switch to one of the schematics. We can also select a group of components in the schematic and they will also become selected and then can be moved as a group in the PCB. Let's first have a look at the properties panel. A selection is driven by the settings here in the selection filter. As we can see, with nothing selected, the default is for everything to be selectable. Click on all objects. This will clear the group. Now click on just the components tab in the selection filter. This will enable only components to be selected. Use the sweep to select some components in the schematic. Here we have selected four objects. This can be seen at the bottom of the properties panel. Let's switch back to the PCB. Notice the four parts have become selected. We can now move them by using left mouse click on one of the highlighted parts and move the mouse. Let's zoom out using the control mouse wheel to get a better view of the PCB. We can also use the right mouse button hand sweep to bring an area into view or centralize the viewing area. After moving the components, left mouse click anywhere on the PCB to deselect them. Another thing to remember is that you can use Ctrl Z at any point to undo the last move, or if needed, undo a number of steps. Going back to the schematics, we will select a number of components, but this time instead of a group selection, we will use the left mouse click on the first one and while holding down the shift key, continue to click on additional parts. The order we select them is important. Now moving back to the PCB, we see they are selected as before. This time we will use a handy placement feature. Click on the pull downs tools menu and select component placement and then select reposition selected components. Now the first part we selected on the schematic becomes attached to the mouse. We can rotate it and zoom in and out as well, even during the placement operation. Left mouse click to place the part. Immediately the next becomes attached to the mouse. 
As you see, the fly line connections can be an aid to placement and orientation. Continue placing all the selected parts until finished. Now clear the highlighted components by left mouse clicking away from the selection or using Shift C. At this point, we have only placed parts based on a block level understanding of the design. We will shortly continue the component placement and use the connection fly lines to fine tune the placement and orientation. Let's zoom into U2. Here we can see a lot of connection lines, maybe too many. We can selectively reduce the number of lines by hiding some of them. Click on the view pull down menu and select connections and then hide all. Notice on the PCB all the connection lines have gone. We can now add connections just for a part by following the same. Select view, connections and then select show component nets. By selecting U2, we enable the connection lines connected to it to be seen. Right mouse click to exit the show components nets mode. It is also possible to hide individual connections. In this case, we will hide power and ground to reduce clutter. This time, use the view pull down menu and select connections, hide net. Now, left mouse click on the power and ground pins to hide their connection lines. To move the view for a better look at the local area, zoom out and hold down the right mouse button and sweep the mouse to move the view. Looking closer, we can now position the U2 support parts based on the connections. It can also help to switch to 3D mode in order to see the PCB layout as it can give us a real life perspective of the board placement and layout. Hit the number 3 key to go into 3D mode. To rotate the view in 3D, Hold the shift key down to get the track ball to appear and then use the right mouse button to rotate the view. To rotate the 3D view to 90 degrees, hit the number 9. To reset the 3D view, click on the 0 key. To return to the 2D mode, hit the number 2 key. We will continue moving parts and utilising connection lines to fine tune the placement of the PCB. And here is the final placed design. While this design does not require it, placing the component on the bottom side is done by selecting the component and hitting the L key during the move command. This will toggle the part from the current layer to the opposite side of the board. Another way to do this is to select a part and change this layer in the properties panel. Although at the moment the heads up display is disabled, Normally it would be enabled by default preferences. We can turn this on and off using the shift key and tap the H key. This concludes the placing components on the PCB module. In the next module we will cover routing the PCB.